Flip on CNBC, scroll through Twitter, or open YouTube, and you will see dozens of segments, tweets, and videos explaining why the recent rise in energy prices, especially oil, is the canary in the coal mine for the world economy, a sure sign that we're months away from a massive economic downturn similar to 2008. While it may be true that oil has now surpassed $80 a barrel and Chicago gas stations are now charging over $5 a gallon, there is a large spread between higher energy costs and the meltdown of the entire economic system. In today's video, we take a deep look at energy and analyze if the rising cost of oil, coal, and natural gas is a danger worth worrying about. What we discover may shock you, a revelation that may potentially lead to a disaster, one that involves geopolitics, the green energy push, and uncomfortable truths that rarely get mentioned on platforms like this. Before we begin, I would like to quickly give a shout out to Doomberg, a Substack newsletter that publishes amazing articles created by people who are scared about the future. This video is largely inspired by this article titled Oil to $300. You can find it linked in the description below. Now back to the video. To begin, we have to go back to April 20th, 2020, the day oil futures went negative. It was the perfect storm. Producers did not want to halt production, hoping that low prices wouldn't last long. At the same time, OPEC couldn't agree on any sort of policy, all while oil storage was filling up, forcing oil tankers to become floating storage. What happened next was simple. There was a storage risk. Everyone was eager to get rid of their oil and the supply shock pushed the price to a level previously thought impossible. Many that day declared oil dead. After all, hydrocarbons were the root of all evil, a poison that was destroying the world. Even before April 20th, oil giants were struggling as more and more money managers found themselves pressured to move away from investing in crude. There was a stigma now attached to anybody willing to associate their millions with ExxonMobil, Chevron, or any other big player. Now this stigma is moving towards criminalization. Former White House official Bob McNally was quoted saying, We see a shift from stigmatization towards criminalization of investing in higher oil production. It doesn't matter if you believe global warming is a hoax or if you think burning fossil fuels is destroying the planet and action is needed right away as this is the top priority of humankind. This video is for both sides. From the research I have done, I can guarantee you one thing. Unless there are significant changes, the price of oil is going way higher than this. Is it going to be high enough to push gasoline prices to $100 a gallon? Perhaps not, but it makes for a great click-through rate. Although I do think $100 gas is very possible, and if you stick around until the end, you will see exactly why this is not a reach. While oil was declared dead in April, a different event nearly 10 months later showcased the other side and proved to the world just how inelastic commodities can be. In February of 2021, an unusual cold front moved over Texas. The power grid soon collapsed, and with it, so did the supply of natural gas. The infrastructure just couldn't handle the severity of the freeze, and the results were catastrophic. Besides the deaths, injuries, and economic costs, there was another side effect to this event that went largely unreported. Absolutely unthinkable and absurd natural gas prices. You see, gas is priced at places called trading hubs. Think of them as distribution centers. There are dozens of these throughout the United States, and this chart produced by the U.S. Energy Information Administration captures the situation that unfolded perfectly. Now, obviously, looking at these prices, the average person has no idea just how high they really are, as the average person has no reference to natural gas quotes. One problem with comparing quoted prices for different sources of energy is that they are not measured in the same unit. As an example, natural gas is measured in BTUs, or British thermal units. Oil, on the other hand, is priced per barrel, where a barrel is 42 gallons. And gasoline, the most known of the three, is priced in dollars per gallon. To help you understand these prices and just how crazy they got, let's level everything and convert it to barrels. You can check my math in the description below where I describe this conversion method. Remember, a barrel of oil right now is trading around $80. So going back to that chart, we can see the prices listed for each trading hub. Going down the line and converting each of these numbers gets us the following. Now take a look at OGT or Owen Oak Gas Transportation LLC. They operate an interstate pipeline system in Oklahoma. The price of natural gas there reached the equivalent of $6,919 per barrel. And no, that is not a typo. Now remember, a barrel today costs around $80. 
That means for a moment in time, natural gas was around 85 to 100 times more expensive than normal. Sure, this price faded back to more normal levels, but this event proved what is possible if supply gets constrained. I use this example so I can showcase something very important. Hydrocarbons are inelastic commodities. A shortage of them sends prices flying because they are literally unreplaceable yet needed. There are plenty of people who hate fossil fuels and this hate may be well warranted, but right now as we stand, hydrocarbons are essential commodities. The world does not function without them. At this point of the video, you're probably wondering where I'm going with this. What does this abnormal event in Texas have anything to do with the future? The reason you clicked on this video is likely because you are concerned about the path of this country and economy. The next part explains exactly this. Why are energy markets primed for an explosion? If you take a look around the world, you will see a common theme reflected in each country's internal politics. Environmentalism is everywhere, this idea that the world needs to collectively remove all sources of global warming. Oil and gas are obviously the biggest targets. Yet over the past decade, progress has been relatively slow. Sure, we've seen the introduction of electric cars, green buildings, and new movements, but overall, society is still largely dependent on fossil fuels. A large reason for this is that fossil fuels are relatively cheap compared to clean energy alternatives. The sad truth is that we cannot change society without significantly higher prices. Politicians and leaders now know this. Higher prices will do a couple of things. One, they will push more and more investment into new energy research and development. And two, they will motivate everyone to cut hydrocarbon use. But how can someone push prices artificially? We are talking about a trillion dollar industry and free markets exist to counter forces like this. They exist to discover fair prices. Once again, how is this possible and in what ways are we seeing this change? Well, to start, you have a certain portion of society that has won the war in the wells. For years, they have now pushed and crawled their way to victory, and they will continue to extinguish every new source of supply. This ongoing war has had other consequences as well. Oil companies have lowered investments into new projects. ExxonMobil, as an example, used to spend $36 billion on capital expenditures back in 2013. Now this number has been lowered to $16 billion. The same trend is seen throughout the industry, and for a world that is seeing more and more demand, there has clearly been some sort of disconnect between new investments and exploding demand. The truth is out there in the open. You just have to open your eyes and look. Darren Woods is the CEO of Exxon, and one would think that running one of the world's largest oil companies would give you a large amount of power and influence. How are trillion dollar oil companies losing a war to this? Well, they have people like Larry Fink on their side. Larry is the CEO and chairman of BlackRock, arguably the most influential bank in the world. BlackRock has around $9 trillion in assets under management and owns large pieces of oil companies around the world. In fact, they own about 5% of Exxon, which gives them the power to influence its board and therefore power to influence its decision making. Now, Larry Fink is no climate scientist. He has no specific expertise in environmental issues. According to his Wikipedia, he holds a bachelor's in political science and an MBA in real estate from the prestigious Kellogg School of Management. But as I will explain in just one second, Larry Fink is now essentially in charge of global oil policy. This one man has the power to change prices. He has made it clear over and over again that there will be less and less drilling. In a bizarre move, Larry and his team directly changed up the board and the corporate structure at Exxon. It's out there in writing. Here's the letter saying, quote, As the world, ExxonMobil peers and investors confront the climate emergency, it has been made crystal clear to us that ExxonMobil's inadequate response to climate change constitutes a broad failure of corporate governance and a specific failure of independent directors to oversee management. This is not limited to just Exxon. In his annual letter to chief executives, Fink wrote, where we feel companies and boards are not producing effective sustainability disclosures or implementing frameworks for managing these issues, we will find board members accountable. By the way, Larry is a billionaire, so to him, gas at $3, $10, or $100 doesn't really change his life. His Gulfstream 650 will still be guzzling up to 453 gallons per hour. But hey, hypocrisy doesn't exist as long as you say you're, quote, saving the world. Also, don't feel bad about Exxon or its board. Higher prices will just mean they will go from rich to stupid rich 
while us, the middle class, gets destroyed. Remember, higher prices are the only way the world moves to alternatives, and leaders will ensure they get us there. Now, how high it can go is a tough question to answer, but we saw what can happen when supply runs dry and demand explodes. The path to net zero is a rough one, and with increasing demand, a slowdown in supply, and the war on hydrocarbons exploding, we are about to face some volatile times ahead. Welcome to 2030, welcome to $100 gas, welcome to the new normal. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you help the channel out by hitting that subscribe and like button. As always, thank you guys for watching, and please make sure you let me know what you think in the comments below.